I never intended to be a goat farmer. I did not grow up on a farm or a ranch. I grew up in a small rural community where my father was the local veterinarian. So I did grow up loving and caring for a lot of animals. With my background, combined with my husband's formative experiences working on ranches, we set out to create a hobby farm lifestyle. And this is what we got into. The mess included fallen down buildings, junk cars, barrels and cans of chemicals, including banned substances like chloridane and DDT. But with vision, helpful professions in restoration and conservation, and the land's ability to recover, we created a new life for Farm 51. We're in a habitat of transitions with sagebrush uplands, wetlands, and the Rocky Creek Corridor. We traded in our free time, our weekends, our recreation, our extra money for a small herd of dairy goats. And I made cheese and soap and ice cream. And we sold registered breeding stock to dairies and individuals. The baby boys went on the meat truck because that's how a dairy business works. I loaded the boys on the truck a few times, and then I found I couldn't do it anymore. I loved them too much. We would have to kill them ourselves because <laughs> providing a healthy and stress-free quality of life for eight to 18 months is a humane and important thing to do. So after years of home butchering, my husband encouraged exploring meat goats, and I dared to invite local chefs to a tasting, and our hobby dairy herd was transformed into a commercial meat goat operation. Meat goat, by the way, isn't strong tasting and has as much protein as beef and as less fat as chicken. So now I'm a goat farmer, and my husband is wondering how the heck the herd tripled in size. So why do we do this? I simply love goats and their quirky personalities, and I take pride in a healthy herd, and I truly enjoy being part of the local food community. Raising livestock is a truly humbling and grounding experience. We understand a little bit about a lot of different things and we learn more all the time. Grazing management using intensive rest rotation, health care, breeding, genetics, non-lethal predator control. Our guard donkey is very much like a spoiled three-year-old. So sensitive, in fact, that when we processed goats on site, he would stand in the far corner of the corral for, with his back to us for days because he understood what was going on. But he runs off strange dogs with his head down and his ears back, and some days he can be a total ass and harass the herd. I would not say that every day on the farm is a joy. Fixing fence, mugging out the barn, maintaining infrastructure are definite chores and hard manual labor. And there's an emotional component to farming too. Some days are sad, some are vexing, and some are full of joy. For us, and for most family farms and ranches, we produce much more than a food product. Our stewardship practices support our goal to provide healthy, quality habitat for birds, fish, and wildlife that share our farm. And we are always thrilled when the sandhill cranes come back to nest. We operate completely within the Gallatin watershed from birth to plate, leaving our farm to deliver goats to Amsterdam Meats and then bring the product to Saffron Table is less than 100 miles. And this is significant because our modern food system uses more fossil fuel than any other sector of our economy, 19%. When we placed goats on the meat truck, they traveled over 1,000 miles, and then the product would be distributed from there. The industrialization of agriculture has increased the amount of greenhouse gases emitted by our food system by an order of magnitude. The benefits of natural grass-fed meat production are both in nutrition and the landscape. Meat is high in protein, nutrient-dense, low in bad fats, balanced in the good fats, and the benefits of raising small ruminants include soil health, natural fertilizers, and weed control. We value being part of the local food movement, but the challenge of this more sustainable approach is being able to make that small-scale farm an economically viable operation. The fact is, is that our farm doesn't break even, and I'm not sure if it will, but we're in the process of finding out. 
But it isn't just about the money. Farm 51 is in the business of education. School groups and scouts visit us and learn about animal husbandry, nutrition, and how a farm works. Because even in Bozeman, a lot of kids don't have experience with livestock or an understanding of agriculture. And we're in the healthcare business too. The kids bring big smiles and a lot of joy to residents at a rest home. The therapeutic reactions are very real because it is simply impossible to be in a terrible mood or a depressed state if you're holding a baby goat or watching them parkour around a barnyard. The farm has brought in our community and built relationships we never would have had otherwise. And these community connections are the foundation of sustainability. Because if we know and care about one another, we'll work together to find solutions that will support all of us. We didn't set out to have a goat farm, but it's an important part of our lives. My immigrant grandmother made food as an act of love. And we believe that if food is loved, it tastes better. Thanks so much for listening to our story, and we hope you'll visit and enjoy your next goat meat meal. Thank you.